Hi, my name is Duffy Burns. I'm a docent with the Friends of the Elephant Seal, and I want to share with you some information about elephant seals and think about what we can learn uh, from uh, their skull. So if you look at this, think about identifying what this is. This is an elephant seal skull. However, it's not a real skull, it's a model. How can you tell? Well, you're right. It's yellow. It's not white like a regular skull would be. And is it of a male elephant seal or a female elephant seal? And how would you know? It's very large, and therefore this is a male elephant seal skull. Now, if we look at the skull, it's got some, some interesting features. You'll see this big space here. You'll notice that it does not have the proboscis. It doesn't have the long nose because that long nose is not made out of bone, it's soft tissue. So as, after the elephant seal died, that tissue would uh, dissolve, disappear, and would leave this cavity here. So let's see what we can learn about the elephant seal by looking inside its mouth. So we'll open its mouth, and you'll notice right away it's got a couple very big teeth on the top and very big teeth in the bottom. Uh, and do you have teeth like that? And actually, yes, you do. You have two, we call those canine teeth on the top and the bottom. And how are these teeth different than the arrangement in your mouth? If you look inside, you'll notice that it does not have the, the wide, flat teeth in the back called our molars. It's got these little pegs. And this tells us a little bit about how the elephant seal actually eats. So to give you a little demonstration, we'll show you one of its favorite foods, a squid swimming along the elephant seal would sense it, open its mouth, and slurp it in. Might grab it once with his teeth, but then he'd swallow it. And we know he's not going to chew it up very much because, unlike you or I, it does not have molars. So the elephant seals are going to swallow this, their food whole. Hopefully you're not doing that. This gives the elephant seal a, a challenge because its food is going through his body in big humps. And it needs, uh, it needs extra time to absorb this food. So in the elephant seal's body, their intestines, which we all have intestines, so we're all mammals, these are mammals. Those intestines in the elephant seals are 15 to 25 times as long as the elephant seals, which means that they're longer than a football field. In humans, our intestines are only about five times our height, which means for most humans, it's about 25 feet long. So the elephant seals have substantially longer intestines because they eat their food in big chunks. Now, the other feature that you'll see, obviously, on the front is this cavity. And if you look carefully inside, you'll see that the bones in there are uh, broken up into little channels. This is called the turbinate process. And it has a special function in the elephant seals. When they, are, um, they breathe, they breathe through their nose. And when they're on the beach, uh, as we see them at the San Simeon, or, excuse me, at the, yeah, Piedras Blancas Rookery, they are not eating or drinking anything. They breathe out through their nose, and the moisture that's in their, in their lungs, and they breathe it out, it condenses on the turbinate process, and they're able to save or collect most of that moisture, so they, they their water loss is reduced. So this is, allows them to spend 30 days or up to 110 days in the case of the males on the beach without having to go back in the ocean and eat anything or, or get water from their food. Elephant seals, when they're looking for food, we talked about that, they are um, they're the deepest diving seals and they their food source is uh, generally between 1,000 and 3,000 feet deep. As we go down into the ocean, what happens to the amount of light? Today we're out here on a nice bright sunny day, but as you go deeper and deeper underwater, the amount of sunlight decreases until uh, at about 700 feet there's no light from the sun at all. But these elephant seals don't stop at 700 feet, they go down to 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 feet, and as a matter of fact the deepest dive uh, that's been recorded is um, over a mile deep. So they're down there in the dark 
trying to find their food. Oh my goodness, how can you find food in the dark? If it was us walking around our house, we put out our hands and feel around. Elephant seals don't have don't have long arm bones, so they can't do that. So they have to rely on a couple uh, a couple special senses. They have um, well uh, well developed whiskers on their front. Their whiskers look just a little bit like dog and cat whiskers, but these whiskers are more, much more sensitive. Scientists have studied them and found that they have five to 10 times more nerve endings than the endings on a dog or a cat. And just recently they were studying sea lions. They found out that sea lions actually had individual nerves going from their whiskers right up to their brain, which means that they could actually in a certain sense, use their whiskers like we would use our fingers. They could actually sense which whisker was being stimulated, and if something swims by in one direction, they might they be able to tell which way it was going. And scientists think they can actually tell how big it is, and it allows them to find something in the pitch black. Now, the other thing that elephant seals have, if you look at their eyes, you can see the picture of their eye here. Here they're looking to the side, but you'll notice that in their eye, their entire eye is co covered by their iris. The iris is a part of your eye that has color in it. Probably many of you have brown eyes or blue eyes. That, that part of your eye is called your iris. And for humans, you'll notice that around our eyes, our iris is surrounded by white. Elephant seals have white on it, but it's just on the side. So in the very middle of it, you'll see that black dot there. That black dot is called your pupil, and your pupil can adjust in size, uh, and it's sort of an interesting thing to do, to stand in front of a mirror, close your eyes, and then open your eyes real quickly, and you can notice that your pupil will change shape. Underwater, down where there's no sunlight, the elephant seals have the ability to open their pupil all the way to the diameter of their eye. You and I can change our pupil size by a factor of about 20. Elephant seals can increase their pupil size by 400 times. So that allows them to let in light. And we have a little model here that shows you how big the eyes are. Here's, here's a model of how big their eye is. And you'll notice that this is all black. That's because they can open that pupil all the way up to let in lots of light. Now, a lot of, we, one of the things we ask people is, where would you put this eye on this elephant seal? And elephant seals, because they are predators, they, their eyes are focused in the front, just like our eyes are. Or if you look at your, uh, at your dog or cat, or you look at a, a bird of prey, like an eagle or a hawk, they have eyes in the front. Front-facing eyes allow them to measure distance very quickly. Now, wait a minute. I told you that we go down into the ocean, go down 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 feet, there's no light from the sun. What good is it to have eyes that open real wide? Is there any light down there? And the answer is yes, there is. The, um, there are several animals um, that make their own light. And you may or may not know that's called bioluminescence. Here's a picture of a squid. So animals that live down in the dark in the ocean, many of them give off light for a number of, number of reasons, uh, to attract a mate, maybe to attract other food, to help them know where their, the rest of their, uh, their group or their school is. But elephant seals will take advantage of this because they can sense that light with their wide open pupils and go over and have, go over and have dinner. Now, how do we know that el what elephant seals eat? Uh, that's a very good question. One of the ways we found out is that for squid, the only hard part of a squid is the part we call the beak. And elephant seals that are that have been found a lot, or found and we've done a necropsy on, we've done like an autopsy, we can open their stomach and actually find the remains of the beaks. You can see how sharp they are. That's the only hard part of a squid. And that's what's left in the elephant seal's stomach because they can't, they can't dissolve all that. Thank you very much for your attention. I uh, hope you get a chance to come out to our uh, Piedras Blancas elephant seal workery and see the elephant seals in action.